Hey, I'm Coach Jay. This is uh, Junior Coach uh, Andrew, Ottawa Valley Golden Boy, Burgoyne. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 mistakes that beginners make during sparring. All right, number six, slipping too far or slipping outside of your balance base. This is, I'm sorry, can you just show Gunnar here? I'm sorry, if you can hear the whining, this is my dog Gunnar. Being in the ring is new for him, so he's quite upset that he can't be up here with us. So if you hear him, that's what this is. So, <laughs> that's going to pretty roughly. Uh, slipping too far or... There, now he's actually trying to get up. <laughs> slipping too far or slipping outside your balance base. So what I mean by this, we'll work here so they can see us. If he throws his cross and I slip, and I slip down here, well, I've made a miss. So in some people's books, this is fine. But look at the distance I now have to cover to come back and to counter. It's a lot of distance. It's a lot of energy when all you need to throw is this. If he can rub your ear, you feel it go by your ear, that's perfect. Boom! Then you're right there. That's a little bit of energy. This is a lot. You're going to wear yourself out of every single time you slip. You're making a miss by a mile and not a millimeter. Make a miss by an inch. Don't make a miss by a mile. Okay? The second one, and it very often it comes in the same, uh, under the same category, which is why I'm including it is when he throws any punch, what we're going to use this cross so that you can see what we're doing. The edge of my stance, that is the edge of my balance base. If I slip through a cross, if I slip out here, my head is past my heel, which means I'm not balanced right here. So the head throw up. If he throws that hook, push a little bit. I can't actually, <laughs> there's not much involved there. You just can't maintain your balance. So slip outside your balance base. So head right there you go. Head there, watch this. One finger. You can't stand up. If you get hit when you're slipping like that, you are going to have a seat in the middle of the ring. Again, you're moving so far, you slip like that. I mean, even if you never have to pay for it, your cardio is going to pay for it, and you don't want that cardio is paying in boxing. All right, number seven, the seventh mistake that beginners will make in early sparring or in your first five to ten fights is ring craft. Not learning to cut the ring off so that you can use the ring in the way that you want to use it instead of allowing him to manipulate you and following, pulling him back. It most often happens with a defensive fighter and an aggressive fighter. So Andrew's a defensive fighter, so he likes to fight off his back foot. What I mean by that is he'll come in the pocket, and he'll throw his offense, boom, 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 and he'll jump out. Now, in order for him to maintain his distance, if I move forward, he's going to move back. Move forward, he moves back, you see he takes a little angle. What a lot of beginners will do is they'll follow him. Take another angle. Is they'll follow him. Another one. And they'll follow him. So I'm just following wherever he goes. If you do that against a defensive boxer who knows, who has good range management, you are going to catch a lot of jabs. And if there's any wonder about how powerful jabs are, they're not, how much damage a jab can do, not much, try and take them for three rounds because you're following around a guy who's just popping in the mouth 30, 40 times around because you're following him and not using your space. So then, I'll just follow. He's always going to stay at a distance, and when he finds his spot, go ahead, back. You're going to take one of those. Well, I'm just following. So he's choosing all of these engagements. You can sometimes slip, but every time I slip, it gives him a time. It gives him a time to double up and hit me again. What you want to do? He wants to stay in space. That's why he's backing away. It's why he's moving. As an aggressive fighter or shorter fighter. What you want to do is you want to get him, you want to fight him in a phone booth. So, so we're just going to uh, go back towards the ropes. Yeah. So he's taking angles. Instead of me following him like this, 
I'm going to now start moving this way. And he tries to go that way, I'm going to throw a punch. He's now in the corner. And now I'm going to go off. That's where you have the advantage in cases like that. Uh, you won't find that to be so prevalent against aggressive fighters because aggressive fighters are always trying to move forward and they're biting heads in the middle. Now you may still end up with people on the ropes and then you get into things like learning how to turn the corner get off the ropes. But ring generalship won't come into, uh, won't come into play as much unless you've got one guy drawing you. Don't get drawn. Don't follow him. It's a trick. You follow him, you're going to get punched in the face all day long. Don't follow him. Use your footwork. Slip. Get him against the ropes. Move. Go ahead. So if he starts moving that way, I'm not going to just continue to go towards him. I want him back on those ropes. So when he moves that way, he's opening a door this side. Shut that door. Make him go back that way. I know he's going to go on that angle now. So I'm going to go towards him. Again. Again. And at any time, if he tries to go at the door that you don't want him to go, you're going to fill it with fists. Alright? So that's following versus cutting off the ring. Learn how to do it. It's incredibly important. Alright, so number eight is your stance getting too short when you're, when you're moving around the ring. You will find people's stances are different lengths. Andrew's is a little closer because he likes to be able to have uh, mobility. You'll have better short distance movement uh, if you've got a wider stance, but you lose some of your mobility to be able to get around the ring quickly. So, I actually forgot which one I was on. Short stance. Right, thank you. <laughs> so what people will do is when I show a little bit wider stance just to make it easier to, to see, when people are walking around the ring, they'll walk with the wrong foot. Step with the front foot first, once once go that way. That's wrong. Show the right way to do it. Right. Step with the foot that is in the direction you're going to go. He wants to go to the back, he moves with his back foot first. You do not move with your front foot first. People want to do that because it takes you away from range. The problem with that, go ahead again, take you away from range. A double jabby coming back in. If you have a narrow stance, you're going to get hit and you're going to find your butt in the ground too. It's a two for one. You hit the mouth, your butt hits the ground. So try and keep that stance relatively uh, consistent all the time. You don't want to give yourself a weak spot where you can be timed into being hit when your stance is short because you will find that your, your rounds are considerably shorter when the referee waves off the fight. All right, number nine, and one of the more important ones that, uh, that I see is not changing levels when you're shooting to the body. So we're just going to use uh, the jab to the body for now because it's easy to demonstrate on video what I mean by that. So when he throws a punch to the body properly, okay. he's going to throw a jab to the body that keeps him open so that you can see what he's doing. Go ahead. He changes levels. Most often he's going to step into his front foot. Boom, and come back out. Use your, use your distance properly. Right. There you go. Boom, and back out. The point to this, go ahead, and freeze, is when he's here, he's moved his head from where he was, so most likely you're not catching him in the chin. He goes down, it's just like he's weaved over a punch, you miss. If you just punch down, which is what I find a lot of beginners do, so just punch down, look and how open his face is. Now I've got him to put his hand down there so you can see this. But if he punches up here with his shoulder roll, his chin's relatively protected. You punch down here, all of a sudden, you're giving him a target. And when you punch, he punches. That's just what happens. He wants those points back. So when you throw a punch to the body, change levels for your punch to the body, please. This is, this is, this is, this is, the champ is here!